The corridor shows bodies piling up while the JSDF is being authorized to execute non-combat personnel. Take a look at this shot. Around 11 bodies are shown, but you cannot see their faces. It is not necessary, because we don't know who these characters are, nor their names. The importance here is to make the audience feel compassion for the fallen, regardless of each person's individuality. We follow up with the hero of the story, Shinji, who has lost all will to live at this point, only reacts to a bullet hit in the stairs. He doesn't try to run, he doesn't cry with a gun to his head. He understands that this is a punishment for what he did to Asuka, for what he did to Kaoru. Let's put this into perspective to add to the immersion. After Shinji killed Kaoru, he tried to find an acceptable justification. In the aftermath, Shinji looked for Misato for it. She only said that he did the right thing. But this was not enough for him. He got lost in his emotions and thus tried to reach Asuka, who was in a worse position than he ever was. Asuka, like Shinji, lost her mother, and it can be argued that the two of them were witness of their own mother's death. But you would agree with me that for Asuka was worse, as for she had to suffer through her mother madness rejection and suicide. Shinji nevertheless fought longer and more than Asuka in an Evangelion unit. His father's rejection was always haunting him, but many times he used it as a motivation to move on. On top of it, he had to witness how his beloved Rei died for him. When Shinji reached out to Asuka at the beginning of the film, he did something terrible. And now, adding all these events together, Shinji feels he deserves punishment. He doesn't seek it, he just waits to come. And it seems they finally got to him. But then Misato appears in one of her more glorious moments in the entire story. As the badass as she is, takes all of the hostile forces by herself and executes the last one. Misato is in pain, she is suffering, but she is also angry for what is happening and what will happen. She takes Shinji to the parking garage. Notice how there is blood everywhere. This let us know that it doesn't matter where you go in this facility, there is nowhere to hide. Misato then gives Shinji a choice. Ask him if he wants to pilot the Eva or run away. At this point, Misato knows that everyone is going to die somehow. However, you get to choose the way you die, just like Kaoru did. Then Shinji asks for Asuka's help. But why? Why this obsession with Asuka, who is sedated, when Misato is right there? Well, the answer is that Asuka never ever let down Shinji. Yes, she mistreated him and underestimated him, but not a single time betrays Shinji the way that every other character in the story has, including Gendo, Misato, and even Kaoru. In his head, Shinji sees Asuka as the true heroine of this story. Shinji never witnesses Asuka's desperation, depression. He thought, as Misato said, that Asuka was having her first period and it was just a mood change. And later on, he was way too busy with Kaoru. He doesn't completely understand why this strong figure could have ended up helpless in a bed. It's very surreal. Ano might have done this intentionally, once again, to portray Shinji as the audience and what the audience wants. That strong heroine from the beginning of the story to come, reunite with Shinji, revitalize him and together save the day. And because the audience once again doesn't get what they want, they cry. Misato then takes her more dominant role. She understands that being nice to Shinji at this point is useless. She needs him one more time and decides to give him some tough love in this sequence like a mother or a big sister that pushes you to wake up from that imaginary world. In the meantime, Aoba and Hyuga keep following Misato's order to fight till the end. Well, Fujitsuki understands that there is no way they can get out of it. The only thing that he can do is give Gendo more time to execute his plan. He orders to defend the terminal dogma at all cost. Then again, Ano displays a beautiful animation sequence focusing on explosions and the horrors of war while an N2 mine detonates to open a hole directly over the headquarters, followed by an spectacular rain of missiles. 
Misato then takes Shinji in her car through an evac cemetery, while telling him all her findings regarding the second impact and what they intend to do now. This sequence is pretty similar to the very first episodes of the series. Back then, Misato saved Shinji also while driving her car, and yet again an end to mine was launched. Later, she also took Shinji deep into nurse headquarters. We are shown flashes as Misato talks, one of them is Yui's burial place to highlight some of Misato's comments, such as minimize damages. Then, as she explains about Aidan and Lilith, those flashes show Kaoru and Rei. Now, everything that Misato is saying could be very confusing for a first time viewer, and that is because her explanation is flawed. It's not entirely correct. This is probably due to the manipulation by SEAL and world governments to the data and the events that produced it. Something that they do, and we were already revealed early in the story. Now that we know the full story, we know that the Katsuragi expedition had no intention to minimize damages, because they were not expecting damages at all. The whole idea of that contact experiment was to reduce Aidan to an embryo and take it out. The expedition goal was never to force a second impact. Furthermore, Misato's information is so limited that she doesn't even know about the Spears replicas. I said on a past livestream that one of the biggest flaws of the entire Neon Genesis Evangelion story was that they did not enough world and lore building, and suddenly Misato is throwing at us a big pile of information that was explained by complementary reading material. Not the show itself. No one ever told us in the show about the Seed of Life, why one of them accidentally impacted the Earth, about the White Moon and the Black Moon, not to mention about the differences between Gendikari's and Seal's plan. If we barely know the difference between Adam and Lily, then Misato orders Shinji to go out and fight the Evas. This is why all of the failed Adam copies witness her comments. Funny to see her obsession to defeat the angels, the murder of her father now is long gone. The shot, a phone, yet again another representation of lack of communication, pretty similar to that of episode 1. It seems we are trapped on a loop. Japan's prime minister is informed that NERF has its own plan for instrumentality. Now how come the Japanese government can act so calm talking about instrumentality as if it were another infrastructure plan that is going to be archived for never to be concluded? if we are talking about the end of the world, right? There should be military forces deployed everywhere in the world, the UN Security Council issuing orders left and right, people being conducted to bunkers and safety zones, right? Well, that is because SEAL or Sele never told world governments the whole truth. We are just witnessing bureaucracy in action, while the beautiful pendulum is counting down the end of this story. Now moving forward in this video, I will omit Asuka's sequences, because I am going to address them in its entirety on my next one. Instead, I am going to focus mostly on Shinji and Misato, so bear that in mind. But I will say this, that for the first time in these transitions of events that Shinji shows some kind of reaction is when he hears Maya over the communication lines that Asuka is alive. Misato crashes her car against a wall deep into the headquarters. We can see from this image how Misato examines the wall and realizes that the special forces are already there. Won't be easy moving forward, but there is no turning back. Shinji must get to the EVA and fight. Then we see the door that leads to the elevator for the cage of Unit 1, at the bottom of a cross, a symbol for Misato, and a constant reference for many other icons in the story. For some means faith, for other sacrifice, even both, a very common representation of death. Misato then carelessly, without looking at their surroundings, proceeds to their way in, when a curtain of bullets falls upon them. She quickly protects Shinji with her body, again the protective mother, sister, lover, running into the doors, closing them behind them. Shinji reacts this time after seeing Misato's blood. He assures him that everything will be fine. Shinji at this point into the movie is at brink of insanity, and everything is happening very fast for him. In a normal situation he will be accepted in a mental facility, and Misato has never been a very tolerant and patient figure. 
she knew before these events that odds for survival were scarce, at least for her as head of operations. Now she knows there is no escape. However, Misato's lifelong goal to defeat the angels and avenge her father have been fulfilled. All that is left is to save Shinji. Misato made many mistakes in her relationship with Shinji. She was overprotective, she seduced him and spoiled him, allowed him to do whatever he wanted almost showing no resistance. He has been her most precious treasure since she took him into her apartment. But still, after all the story, she still has no idea how to behave with him, and in the following sequence she will try to use all her personalities the understanding and caring Misato the mother, the tough Misato older sister, and the sensual Misato the lover. Shinji knows that he had made unforgivable mistakes, doing what he did to Asuka, Kaoru, his friends, family. At the end, this is a decision between kill and get killed, and he has chosen the later one. After all, he is not worthy. Misato then is tough with him. Shinji breaks in tears. Misato's words are like long knives going through his heart, and many of the things that Misato says to describe him can be used both ways. Misato is trying to tell him that they are very similar. Then we see Kaoru represented in the number 17. After all, he was Tablis, the angel of free will. Shinji always did the things that he did on his own will. Nobody ever forced him to go to Nerf or enter Unit 1 or to live with Misato. When he wanted to leave, he left. When he wanted to return, he returned. He always had a choice. Even when killing Kaoru, or did what he did to Asuka, was always because he wanted to. Misato then proceeds to grab Shinji and pull him up, trying to say to step up to the circumstances, to be at her level, to be a man worthy of her, to see directly at her eyes and move towards his destiny, to complete his journey for self-discovery, giving him the cross that her father gave to her, she is going to sacrifice her life for the person she loves the most, just as her father did. Then Misato kisses him in the famous grown-up kiss scene, a scene that I like to call Misato's last kiss, promising him way more than that at his return. After all, Misato will finally try to communicate with Shinji the only way that she knows how to communicate with men, through sex. For a deeper study on that, you can go and watch my videos on Misato, or my complete analysis for episodes 25 and 26. Does Misato intend to fulfill this particular promise? Well, no. She knows this is the end of the world, and that she is about to die. It was just a last desperate attempt from her part, to make Shinji, as I said before, to step up. She pushes Shinji into the elevator, and Shinji knows this is it, the last time he will ever see her. As for this was their goodbyes. Misato then crumbles to the floor, leaving a stain of blood in the wall, another connection to original episode 25. Misato starts talking nonsense after all the blood lost, and the camera shows Ray before an explosion that comes from the floor, a bomb that the JSDF had planted on the room below them. From this sequence we can take three things. The first one is reminiscence to the sequence we saw early into the movie, when one of the soldiers attacked one of the nerf guards from behind, leaving him to bleed. This guard was using a red beret, part of the uniform that Misato also wore in previous episodes. This sequence also includes an explosion. The second thing is Ray. We are going to talk a lot about Ray in a future video, but this Ray that we see right here is not the Ray that we all know but we actually have seen before, just at the start of the show, at the very beginning of episode 1. Finally, if we see this sequence frame by frame, we can see how this explosion cut Misato's body in half, with all her insides frying across the screen. It happens really fast, but Anu was very careful in giving Misato a very gory fate. Misato died the same way as her father did, from an explosion. After Misato's end, we are left with Shinji, crying in the elevator. He is for the first time in the story without Misato. His protector is gone, and it will all up to him to decide, once again, his own fate.
we will revisit these events in my next video when we take a look on Asuka's actions. I publish Evangelion and other anime content each week. If you don't want to miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell notification button. If you have already but still feel that you are missing on a notification, consider to follow me on Twitter at Mixans or join my Discord for free, where I provide daily updates on the channel, Evangelion news, and current and classic anime insights and discussions. You will find the link on the description section down below. Guys, thank you all so much for watching and as always I wish you all a wonderful day.